So welcome back for our final press conferences of the day. Uh, quick reminders, please silence all cell phones. No cell phone video, flash photography, or video cameras are allowed in the press conferences. Media may access press conference video at the NCAA digital workroom. When you have a question, please raise your hand so that our microphone person can bring the mic to you. Um, please address, uh, please listen, list your name and affiliation and it's best if you would address your questions to either one of the two players. Uh, and then a reminder that tomorrow, West Virginia's press conference will begin with players at 1.25 p.m. Thank you.
Jake, yeah, she's coming. She's, she's coming. Okay. We'll go ahead and get started with an uh, opening statement from Coach Mark Kellogg, and then we'll go to questions for our student athletes, and another student athlete will join us momentarily. So go ahead, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, proud of our group, proud of the effort, especially on the defensive end. Um, I really thought coming in it could look a little bit something like that just based on Princeton and the way they defend. Um, I, I thought they were maybe under-evaluated or under-appreciated for how good they are on the defensive end. Um, and we talked a lot about, or, or, or people did too, and we read quite a bit about Chen and some of the stuff they do offensively. Um, but I thought we had a chance to defend them if we were dialed in and locked in. And a um, little out of sorts early, um, but I thought we settled in pretty quickly after that and um, played and competed. I want to say they got up nine, if I'm not mistaken, there in that second quarter. And then um, I thought our run to kind of cut it to two, Jordan hit the big three going in um, to half to give us a little momentum, I thought was huge for us. Um, and, and so we just hung around enough in the first half until we finally looked like ourselves in the third quarter. And, you know, that was us at our best. Um, you know, we couldn't get the pace going. It was too slow. Couldn't get them turned over. Um, so finally in that third quarter, we played a little bit of pace, let some defense lead to some offense. And, you know, that's us really at our best. Um, but again, we weren't great tonight, but um, we were good enough. Obviously the free throws was an issue and, and the rebounding. So <laughs> we got to get that fixed for sure. Um, but again, proud of them, thought we gutted it out, um, especially when some things weren't great offensively for us. Thought JJ was special again. She has been all year. I hope people across the country are starting to realize how talented she is. Um, but we have a great backcourt. They've been dynamite for us. I thought they were really, really good. Um, and then I thought Kylie Blackston had some really good minutes and especially in that third quarter um, for us and the rest of the kids just battled their way through. So happy to advance. Um, congrats to Princeton on a fantastic year. That team was, was really, really good and, and everything and more um, from what we wanted. All right, thanks coach. We'll start off with questions for Jordan Harrison. Hi Jordan, John Bonenkamp from the Associated Press. What happened in the second half and, and how, much, how much did your defense really kind of change that game, especially in the third quarter? I mean, we knew we had, you know, 20 minutes left to either, you know, Give us give it, give it our all or, you know, go home. So we just went back to what we've been doing all season. We finally settled in a little bit, got some deflection, slowed them down, you know, start playing in transition like we always do and how we've been doing all year. So we just fed off of that momentum and that energy, and we just kept going the rest of the game. Hi, Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. Jordan, what, what about Princeton defensively? I mean, it was such a low scoring bout in the first half. What about them defensively uh, kept it that way? Uh, they switch, you know, every ball screen, and each person that switched the screen could stay in front of, you know, all of West Virginia, our team. So, uh, honestly, just them switching the screens, you know, that what we kind of struggled with. And then whenever we did get a mismatch, they did good at like getting back in their bigs, back on our bigs whenever there was a little. Over here on the left. Yeah, Jordan, Michael Bobo from ESPN.com. I think you guys um, averaged almost 14 steals a game leading the Big 12. You've played a lot of good offenses. How does that ability to turn over opponents going to help you guys against Iowa on Monday? Uh, honestly, like we've been doing all year, like we feed off of transition buckets, steals, deflections. So we, we're not going to change nothing. We're going to do what West Virginia does, and that's get turnovers regardless who the team is. Go ahead. Jen Hatfield with the next. Um, coach mentioned your buzzer beater to end the first half. Can you just kind of walk me through what you remember of that possession and then how, how big was it for you and for your teammates, um, you know, in the halftime locker room, knowing that you that you had that kind of momentum swing? Uh, I know it was a high ball screen. Uh, I came off, picked up my dribble, probably shouldn't, but I saw JJ there, so I kicked it to her, and then they both went with the big, and then I was wide open. And I just let it go. I mean, I knew it was going to go in, so I'm just glad it did. <laughs> Next question, right here in the front. Hi, uh, Tanner Rounds, U92 Radio. Um, this is for JJ. You kind of had like a little moment after you were shooting your last two free throws and you missed that first one where you looked a little disappointed. Was it going through your head that you had an opportunity for 30 in an NCAA tournament game? Um, no, not really. I was just mad that I was missing a whole bunch of free throws, <laughs> honestly. Um, I mean, a lot of people probably get disappointed missing free throws, so. Just because of that. In, towards the back. We'll go there. Go to the back first. Braden Roberts, Iowa Rivals. Uh, last year, JJ, uh, last year, uh, 
battles from Georgia in the second round kind of went shot for shot with Clay Caitlin Clark. Uh, is that something you're looking forward to on Monday? I mean, I hope not. I hope we can put the game away a little faster than that and we don't have to go shot for shot. But, I mean, whatever happens, happens. Back here in the front. Yeah, Jordan, as somebody who's usually one of the shortest players on the court, you attack the rim so much and, you know, you get a lot of rebounds. What is it that helps you have success down low? Um, honestly, I just been doing it my whole life, so I just got pretty good at it, you know. I got a good little reach a little bit, you know. Got good touch, especially, you know, going right. So, I mean, I just been doing it for so long that it comes easy. Here in the middle. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. This is for JJ. This was kind of asked before you stepped in here. Um, Princeton seemed to be okay with the pressure in the first couple quarters. What really changed in that third quarter run um, to really get them off balance? Um, we went in at the half, and you know, coach said, like, that's not us. Like, our defense is way better than that. So we just picked it up, showed some intensity, some toughness, and you see what happened. Far left. Hi, I'm Hope Perry from the Princeton Alumni Weekly. Um, this is for a coach. Um, no, excuse me, a r for a couple more questions for okay. just players. Okay, um, I'm happy to direct this one to Jordan then as well. Um, so this, you know, this was a tough game in the first half for you guys. You really seemed to struggle a lot with um, Princeton's defense, especially. Um, and so one thing I'm wondering, you know, with Columbia having just, you know, made it into the tournament, two teams, do do you think that there's that people should um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, do you think that there's more to Ivy League basketball maybe than people have been giving it credit for in the past few years? I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, Ivy League is a really good league. I mean, I give it to those girls, you know, they got, you know, it's pretty tough in the classroom and they do basketball, so they balance both of those well, both of those well. But yeah, I mean, I think they should get, you know, a lot more exposure because they're really good basketball players, really smart, and you know, they can do exactly what Power Five schools do, so yeah. Take one more for the players here in the front row. Uh, I mean, this could be for either of you. Um, you talked about how, <laughs> I guess I'll go to JJ. Uh, you know, you, you said how at halftime, coach said that uh, you know, that's not who you were defensively and with the press and being better with that. The other thing was, you know, you were out rebounded significantly in the first half, let up a lot of offensive rebounds, not so much in the second half. What was said at halftime, what adjustments went into kind of fixing that? Um, pretty much the same thing. He kind of gives us goals before each game to keep them at a certain amount of rebounds or points, steals, whatever. So that number was – I ain't going to put the number out there. But, um, <laughs> I mean, they got a couple more rebounds than we expected to, and he just told them to just keep working. I mean, Kylie, Danelle, everybody who was out there about it on the boards and did what we needed to do. All right, players, student-athletes, thank you. You're excused. And we'll go right to questions for Coach Kellogg. Please raise your hand. Go ahead, Steve. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, um, Princeton took 21 three-point shots in this game, 12 in the first half. Uh, they don't normally take that many threes. Was that something that you wanted? I mean, were you? was it part of your game plan to let you know, basically tempt them to shoot from three? No, um, we did not have a goal. Of, I mean, we had a goal that we wanted to hold their makes under, but not necessarily attempts. Um, some of those came late too, probably, you know, when they were playing from behind a little bit in that fourth quarter. So, um, no, I mean, I think they made, what, five or 5.8 a game, something like that, and they made six tonight. So we needed to keep them somewhere around that number. Thought if it got up into the 9, 10, 11, then, you know, we might be in a little bit of trouble. Um, and then... What, I mean, they made two or three there. It felt like right off the bat, St. Rose hit two right there in that first quarter. So it was kind of like, uh oh, here we go. Um, you know, but if you can make teams somewhat one dimensional, then I think that's an advantage. Um, so I think points in the paint swayed pretty heavily our way. And, uh, you know, if they were taking perimeter shots, then they weren't getting paint touches. And that was something that was important to us. Jen Hatfield with the next. Um, going back to that press, you know, were there any tactical changes you made at half, or was it just locking in more? Like, what what specifically do you think was the difference between, 
you know, Princeton being able to handle your pressure in the first half and, and kind of not being able to handle your pressure yeah. nearly as much in the second? Yeah, there was there were some minor tactical adjustments, which I'm not going to go ahead and give you those um, in case we need them again. Um, and really, it was just settling in to see what their press breaker was going to be. Um, was it something we had seen on film? They had had a week to prepare something different if they wanted to. Um, it looked like they had a couple different press breakers prepared for us, depending on what press we ran. So it was just kind of that back and forth from the coaching side that, hey, here's a couple things we wanted to do. Um, I thought we had backed off a little bit. Um, but part of it, too, is we weren't scoring. And we can't press if we don't score um, very effectively. So we needed to score a little bit more, which we did in that third quarter. OK, here in the front on the left. There you go. Yeah, Coach, you guys beat Oklahoma, which is obviously a fairly high-scoring offense. It's really led by guards. Does that game at all remind you of the matchup with Iowa coming up? I think that's somewhat fair, for sure. Um, you know, uh, yeah, that they play at a – I mean, this is the elite elite offense in the country. Oklahoma was, I think, top five or six as well when we played them. Um, you know, they can definitely get it going from three. Now, the way they run their offense is probably a little bit different, and obviously – Caitlin is special, but they're they're really really talented around her. Uh, but there are some similarities in how good they are in transition, how free they play on the offensive end. Um, I thought OU does the same thing. They just play with this this freedom um, on the offensive end, and um, so yeah, we'll um, there'll probably be a similar conversation from or a game plan that we can use again. Max Hines, Daily Princetonian. So neither neither team shot particularly well from the free throw line. You guys shot 50% and Princeton shot just about 60%. Um, what can you attribute to that to? Do you think it was just playing in March, the sight lines in Carver Hawkeye, or what do you think was the factor? Yeah, I don't know. I, we may need to check the rims, but then I was like, well, the first game, that wasn't a problem, so I guess it's not the, uh, it's not the rim. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe nerves, maybe excitement. Um, you know, I think shooting is contagious, though, and even from the free throw line, when you see even your teammates make free throws, I think that that rim starts to get a little bit bigger, and if you're watching misses, then that rim may seem to get a little bit smaller. So we're a better free throw shooting team than that. We'll have to be better than that, obviously, um, on Monday night. But, um, yeah, we'll get it corrected, I hope. Joe Bricado, West Virginia Metro News. Mark, how important was it to get 10 points out of Kylie, and did you – expect that this was a game that she might have a good matchup and, and be able to give you what she gave you? Yeah, it wasn't necessarily the matchup, I don't think, for Kylie, but I think she's been trending this way now for weeks. Um, so I, I'm excited for her to get to double figures. You know, we talk a lot about trying to get four to double figures, which we still didn't quite do, but to get three, you know, just takes a little bit of the burden off these two that were up here earlier. Um, and I thought her third quarter was, was pretty good. Um, she was active, obviously hit the three in that quarter, too, to get her going. But, you know, it wasn't a ton of rebounds, but I thought her activity on that end helped as well. So, yeah, she's been trending in the right direction. Roberts, Iowa Rivals, uh, coach, some good pressing teams like Ohio State have taken the press off pretty early against Iowa. Do you have any preliminary thoughts on your matchup press against Iowa? No, not yet. Um, uh, yeah, it, it could be difficult for sure, but, um, you know, we said the same thing when you play in OU, and so we'll go back and, and have those conversations tonight and obviously into tomorrow. But, um, yeah, this is elite, and they're pretty good in transition, so we may have to be a little careful, but we'll, we'll go figure it out. Hey, Mark, John Boning here from the Associated Press. JJ played 40 minutes. Um, what, what, what makes her that type of player that you want to have her out there the whole time? Yeah, well, obviously she has a motor. She's a high-level conditioned athlete, which you have to be. Um, you know, she's an elite scorer. Um, it wasn't – I mean, we usually try to get her a break at least in the first half. Um, you know, Jordan got the foul, so that kind of – we, we just weren't able to do that, and it kind of took us out of our normal rotation. So she's done it before. I think she played 40 in the last game, too, in the Big 12 tournament. So um, uh, she's just conditioned enough to do that, and she's a phenomenal scorer. So, um, you know, all eyes go to her when she's on the floor, which makes everybody around her better, too. Luke Blaine, Daily Athenaeum. So this was a very physical game. Do you feel that playing such a long stretch in the Big 12 and just being in the Big 12 in general prepares the team better for a game as physical as this one? I do, and we knew that, kind of watching them on film, um, especially at the post. Uh, Princeton's very physical, very tough, great rebounders. So we knew we had our hands full, um, especially with those guys. So, yeah, we were prepared. The Big 12, 100 percent, the size that we see in that league um, prepared us. U92 Radio, um, what's it, what, how much weight is taken off the shoulders to get that first March Madness win, and how long will you 
you know, kind of relish and enjoy it, or is it right on to Iowa? It's right on to Iowa, so yeah, unfortunately, I won't get to relish it a whole lot. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I never looked at it like there was a weight on my shoulders or anything like that. Uh, I'm excited to get it. I'd been twice at SFA, um, you know, and had leads and went to overtime a year against Georgia Tech and couldn't quite close it. So, um, yeah, it feels good, and you want to get the first. Um, you know, you can't advance if you don't win one. Um, but that's where we want our program to be. You know, we want to be in the postseason. We want to advance in the postseason. That was something in a term that I used in the press conference almost a year ago, that that was the goal, was uh, I want to be a postseason team and I want to advance in it. Um, and so this is a start for sure. Aaron Parker, U92 Radio. You've mentioned all year and just now you want to get four scores a night if you can, at least three um, on any given night. Um, only seven looks, only seven field goals, four Lauren Fields and Kai Watson put together. Um, what, can it, what does it say about Jordan and JJ and even Kylie to where if there's not four scores, you can go out and still beat a really good Princeton team? Yeah, I mean, I, that's the beauty of having those types of players is that if it's not clicking or you're not making shots or, you know, you go, you have a game plan, which we did, and then we kind of had to go away from it a little bit. And credit to Princeton for some of that. Um, but we do need to do a better job. We need to get Lauren a few more touches, Kaya, you know, some of those guys, Jayla. Um, so, we, you know, that's still on us, but at the same time, just do what you got to do to win the game, and that's what we did tonight. Joe Bricado, West Virginia Metro News. Mark, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but to navigate the minutes where Jordan got in foul trouble, particularly late in the first half and then early in the fourth quarter, how important were those stretches to uh, cut into the lead uh, late in the, in the second quarter? Yeah, I know, really important, um, and to do it without her, good confidence for the rest of the group. Um, but Jayla Hemingway is another one that's played really well over the last three, four weeks probably. And so, you know, I thought she defended her you-know-what off. I, mean, I thought she was really good on the defensive end, and she's some of our toughness. I've said that from day one. Our toughness is wrapped up into double zero, um, that identity. Um, and so really happy for her to kind of have the senior, super senior, you know, close that she's had. We've got time for one or two more. Jen, over here on the left. I just wanted to ask, ask you about um, Princeton's guards, you know, Madison St. Rose, Caitlin Chen. You, you were able to turn them over, you know, several times, but they also combined for 39 points. And just curious, you know, what are, what are some of the biggest challenges of defending those two in particular? Yeah, it's just that ability to get to the mid-range, which scares you, so then you play off of them. And then, you know, Chen even hitting those threes today. You know, that was, you know, a little bit of what we wanted to do, I guess, early was kind of see if she would take one, kind of dare her to take one. And then I think she hit the first one when we – we went under that ball screen, hit another one in that corner in front of their bench in the third quarter, um, and then we just kind of had to adjust. But yeah, their ability to really to put it on the floor, get to their mid-range. Um, I haven't seen a team as good at mid-range as, as Princeton, um, really probably ever in our scouting. And so um, they're really good there um, and, and can make the three, and, and, and at times they get to the rim. But that, that mid-range is pretty good, and we fouled them, what, two or three times, I think, on some jump shooters, which is a no-no. All right. Thank you, Coach. Okay, thanks, everybody.